let's apply our understanding of moments to figuring out what the sum total effect is, not the reaction, but the sum total effect of these three concentrated applied forces with respect to point zero. We're gonna, there's more, more than one way to do this, and we'll, we'll illustrate one and maybe briefly talk about uh, the others. So if we want the total moment with respect to point O, what we're going to do then is we're going to sum up the effects from each one of these. Remember that a moment is just a force times its perpendicular distance. We've got to keep track of the sign. looks to me like potentially, at least these two concentrated forces want to spin the system in a clockwise fashion about O, so I'll take that as our positive. And so we've got three kilonewtons times a 1.8 meter distance, and that wants to spin clockwise, so that's a plus. And then we have a 4 kilonewton meter, that's already a couple or a moment, and so we'll just subtract off that 4 kilonewton meter, same units as we had before, they do need to be the same. And then we got to deal with this force that's out here at the far right. Now we could work real hard to figure out the perpendicular distance of this force with respect to point O, or we could do uh, the following kind of thing and that is we could break the 1.4 kilonewton into an X and a Y component and then deal with these moment arms that are there. We could slide the force along its line of action to some other more convenient location, maybe where it intersects with this horizontal that would pass through O and A. Or we could find an equivalent, oh yeah, we got a lot of options. Why don't we just go ahead and resolve this into two different X and Y component forces. There's a 30 degree angle at stake here. And that means we'll wipe out uh, that one. And so let's see here. 1.4 times 30 cosine is going to be 1.212. So there's your vertical component. The other one's going to be a 0.5. So that will be 0.7 kilonewtons. And then we just got to get the moment arms that are going on here. Right, well, we've got our extended x-axis through here, and the hypotenuse is 1.2 meters, so this edge here will be 1.2 times sine of 30, or 1 half, so that's going to be equal to 0.6 meters. And then this base, 1, that's going to be 1.2 meters times cosine of 30 degrees, or 1.039 meters. All right, so when we come along, our y component will have this total distance to be dealt with. It's going to go in a clockwise fashion, so it's going to be plus 1.212 kilonewtons times the total perpendicular distance to its line of action is 1.8 meters plus 0.6 meters plus our 1.039 meters. I've got that in my calculator now, so I'm going to add to it the 0.6 plus the 1.8. That's a total of 3.439 meters. And then might as well go ahead and multiply times 1.212, that's going to get that whole piece of 4.168 kilonewton meters. I've got to include that. Put it in my memory so it's there. That's just the Y component that we're dealing with. Right, so let's get then the other part we got to get the X component, which about point O is also going to create a clockwise kind of motion moment, right? So if we extended this line of action, put it back here, and it would be headed that direction, would want to spin about point O. So that's going to be plus, let's see, the force was 0 0.7 kilonewtons, and the distance perpendicular is 0.6 meters, which of course is just 0.42. In the net we end up with then, is going to be 1.588 plus 3 times 1.8 minus 4 equals 
almost exactly six. It's 5.988 kilonewton meters. And rounded up would be then our moment about zero would be equal to 5.99 kilonewton meters in a clockwise direction. Always put your sign there. That's the imposed load on the support. Of course, the support itself for equilibrium would be going in the opposite direction of that if we were interested in the reaction.